Hey, it's Jens. In today's video, we're going to figure out if it's a good idea to replace the Sigma 24mm 1.4, which is filming right now, with a lightweight version of Viltrox. Most of my lenses are actually macro lens. When you're following this channel, you know that I do a lot of macro photography, but a 24 mm lens is the second most important lens for me because I use it a lot for B-roll, when I'm outside, when I'm hiking, on vacation, when I try some long exposure photography and when I need to film at low light situations. But the Sigma version is super heavy, so I was hoping to replace it with the lightweight version. And in this video, we're gonna find out if the lightweight version can compete with a pricey Sigma one. Let's do it. When you're looking for a good full frame 24 mm lens which performs great at low light situations they're like three price ranges good entry level lens like the Viltrox which can be bought for like 300 euro then there's the Sigma which ranges between 700 and 900 euro and then there's the G Master let's start with some specs the biggest difference between those two lenses is actually that the Sigma is better performing at low light situations and it got an aperture of 1.4 the size is a lot bigger, it is way heavier, and the minimum focus distance of the Sigma is a little shorter, which is definitely a plus when you think of the Bokeh. So let's start with this topic and compare the Bokeh of those two lenses. To make this a fair comparison, I'm using the Sigma only at an aperture of 1.8, so that you can better compare the results and the different Bokeh produced by those two lenses. When you keep in mind that the price of the Sigma is 2.5 of the Viltrox, I think the difference is not too big. But when we take a closer look on the size and the shape of the Bokeh balls, you can see that the Bokeh balls of the Sigma are perfectly round and sharp and the Viltrox shows some, yeah, I wouldn't call it weakness because you can only see it when you zoom in. And here in another few examples I shot outside to show you how good the lens actually are to blur the background from the foreground at mid-range distance. Both lens really do a good job here. The background looks smooth and blurry. And when we take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison, there's really no big difference visible. But when we take a look at the corners, you can see a huge vignetting at the Viltrox, but only at open aperture. And now let's focus on the sharpness. To get the best image quality possible, I shot with an aperture of f8. And here, let's take a look at the raw files I got with the Sigma and with the Viltrox. And surprisingly, the small, cheap, lightweight Viltrox does a pretty good job. When we zoom in, there is almost no difference visible. So this lens is extremely sharp when closing the aperture. And even in the corners, the image quality is actually pretty good. There are no chromatic aberrations visible and the strong vignetting we saw at f1.8 is almost vanished. When we take a very close look, it even seems as if the image coming from the Sigma is a little softer. Okay, now that we know that the Viltrox is super sharp at f8, here's a comparison from all different apertures possible to show you how the aperture is affecting the image quality. Going from f1.8 to f16, it is actually really easy to see how the vignetting gets better by stopping down. At f2.8 it is a lot better, at f4 it looks pretty good and above that there's no vignetting visible anymore. But what about the sharpness? Let's start with the center sharpness. At 1.8 the image is a little soft, between 2.8 and 8 it is actually super sharp, at f11 it gets a little softer and at f16 the image quality is actually not that good anymore. When we take a look at the corners, the performance is actually not that good anymore. But for me, that's actually fine because it is not a high-end lens, so I'm not expecting to get perfect results. At f8, the result is perfect in the corners. At all other apertures, this lens got its weaknesses. So the overall sharpness of this lens is actually pretty good. 
When I shoot video with open aperture, it is okay that it's not the sharpest lens on the planet. When I shoot images, I normally do not need the highest sharpness in the corners, so that's okay. And vignetting can be removed easily in Lightroom afterwards, so for me that's no big deal. What I also like about the lens is actually that it got a USB-C plug, so you can directly install firmware updates on the lens. Of course, this is not a must have, but actually this is the only lens I own which supports this. So yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Okay, now let's check the focus, especially the eye out of focus. Even when moving my head pretty fast around at f1.8, the focus keeps tracking pretty good. The focus is really fast and precise. The eye autofocus is even better. It is actually almost impossible that the Sony a7R 4 which is filming right now with the Viltrox, is able to lose focus. So even at f1.8 and short focus distance, it does its job really good. The sharpness is great, even though there was this huge vignetting at open aperture. That's an issue which you should keep in mind when you think of getting maybe this lens. The Sigma does not have the issue with vignetting but it's 2.5 times the price, so for me that's totally fine. The overall performance of the Viltrox is good and for that price it's actually very good. I really like that I get almost the same image quality at half the weight, which for me is a big plus when you think of hiking and traveling. So is the Viltrox a good alternative to heavy professional gear? Let me know in the comment section what you think about this lens. I hope you enjoyed the video, stay healthy and hopefully see you on the next.